So uh, we're here to, to present our work we did within uh, the Document Foundation Tender. The, the work is about improving uh, our help content, help text with the screenshots and to make this somehow uh, more, more sustainable and to somehow uh, automate the process. So first I'm going to explain like why should we bother in the first place? Why, uh, what, what's the benef what, what are the benefits this is going to bring us? And then I'm going to describe how, how, did, we, how did we do that? What did we implement it so far? And uh, well, what are some, some next, some future steps to take? Because the work is not quite finished yet. So um, is there anyone, any one of you ever, ever read a LibreOffice help text? Raise your hands, a couple of hands. Nice, uh, any, and if of those who raised the hands, any one of you found the text really helpful? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> well, it's, it's usually like with the, if, especially if, you, if you're technical, if you're a programmer, it's, it's often like if, if all else fails, only then read help. And, I have to say our, our help text and our, our help content doesn't really raise much confidence, does it? This is, this is how an average text looks like. It's not so very helpful. It doesn't look good at all. We can do better. For example, like this, which is approximately the same help text, uh, it just like on the, on the, well, it's my, it's my right, probably your left. <laughs> uh, the first one is the standard help if you, if you, you get from pressing F1, and the other is the, is the LibreOffice user guide. And we can do even better. We can actually create screenshots and also annotate them, and somehow interconnect them with the, with the rest of the, with the, the images, with the text, and make navigating them easier for the users. But, as Olivier, who's sitting over there, can confirm, <laughs> uh, this is very, the, the whole process on, of including images into the help text is very tedious. So far, it's, it's purely manual work, and it, it can't be automated in any way. So this is what the document foundation tender, the aim of the tender was to change that. And yeah, well, the other problem the, is that the help text is just some layers and layers of legacy code and obsolete um, workflows and it's not really sustainable long term and the technologies are really so ancient that it's no longer maintainable. So our help content is in some self-invented, like this was this probably this not invented here syndrome. None of the formats is really good enough, so what do we do? Let's invent our own one. And so if you see those XHP files somewhere in the LibreOffice code base, those are the help files. Uh, the, the workflow, like, and, but what you, what you get when you press F1 in LibreOffice, it's actually HTML. So this XHP kind of XML format is run through some style sheet transformations and to, to obtain HTML, and which is what you, what you see in your help browser. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. So if you, if you, if you are a LibreOffice contributor and you want to contribute the help text, what you do? You go and check out the help content repository. And then you realize that you would like to include some image to your to the help text, or are you looking for where the images of the, from the help text are, and you will not find them in the help content repository, you have to go to the core repository, and you, you have to go to the icon themes folder, and that's where the help images are. And this is, this is of course, like if, if you plan to increase, like to, to include some larger amount of graphical content into the help, this is of course not sustainable, it can't be like this. And as I said, like, um, actually enhancing the help content with the images is tedious because it has to be done manually, it has to be done separately for every platform, it has to be done separately for every, every, every language, um, it's, it's not really easily 
repeatable and it's not really efficient. So what would the requirements be? How to, how to improve the state of a pair? As I said, the whole process to include the images has to be repeatable. Anyone should be able to do that. Uh, there shouldn't be much space for any manual interaction. And as we, as we all know, the UI of LibreOffice changes very frequently. Uh, the developers somehow, how to say that, the updating the help text is not the first thing they usually think about. So it happens frequently that the screenshots somehow, they get obsolete very quickly. So it would be ideal to get a new set of screenshots for our dialogue with every release. Which is, which, is, which is what this standard was all about as well. Those screenshots should be platform specific, so we should have different set for Linux, Windows, and Mac. And we should somehow be able to also produce like screenshots with different icon sets and with the different themes. Of course, for the different languages as well, so that if, you, if you're reading the German help text, you don't, have, you don't have the English screenshots. That makes a lot of sense. So what have we done? How did we achieve that? And what are we, what are we going to do? The first logical step to produce the, the screenshots of the LibreOffice dialogues is to actually open the dialog. And this has to be done automatically. And this has to include every dialog. And um, yeah, so, but there is already a framework that does something similar to opening the dialogues. It's the, it's the UI testing framework, uh, which, is, which is implemented in Payuno. It's been done in Mbogi, and it opens dialogues by dispatching the corresponding Uno commands. We have evaluated this framework, and we tried if we can use it for our purpose, but at the end of the day, we decided against it uh, for, for the reasons listed in my slide. Um, there were some heavily perf heavy performance issues, so, and Moggy complained about that himself, that generating, like running a couple of UI tests takes very long time. And it was kind of very challenging to, to debug, you know, in Python. So we suffered from not invented here syndrome and we implemented our own framework. Well, not really own, but we decided to build on CPP unit test, which somehow solved the debugability issues because it's kind of, at least for us, it was easier to debug C, C++ CPP unit than to debug Python with you know. So what, are we, what we're doing is that we're opening an empty document uh, in CPP unit test. Uh, Every, every empty document or every document simply comes with a document shell, and most of the document shells come with abstract dialog factory. At least, right, a calc and impress do, for example, Matt doesn't. And to open a dialog, uh, some dialogs can be opened just like that, but some need some input data, and those are the SFX item sets, the strings, or whatever else they need. So our framework somehow fakes those data or creates those objects like from the scratch, then somehow supplies them through the abstract dialog factory to the dialog and then opens it. And I think Armin can now tell some more details yeah, thanks. to that process. That's why I come in play. As you see, Bubli knows much more about the help stuff. Uh, I don't know as much about the help stuff, but um, I was digging into VCL and uh, how we could do the screenshots, and we try to stay as close at the, cur at the current repaint as possible, and uh, the problem is about 20% uh, of the dialogues need some special data uh, directly um, bounded to the applications they appear in, and for each of them, we had to instantiate some stuff in the unit tests to get them running, and um, this is a lot of work, and so we did the fallback to the standard dialogues with the standard um, instantiator, which, which takes the UI description file, and uh, by default, all dialogues are now, are now added uh, to this mechanism to get a rough screenshot, and if you want more, have to do more, uh, it's handwork, which has to be added. 
and the screenshot itself um, for performance reasons and to get a screenshot as close as it appears in the application. Um, we try to stay as close as what VCL is doing as possible and this means to asynchronously wait for the repaint and it's not easy to find a, a spot in time to get a clean screenshot but at least we managed to do this and the current code it's already in there so there's a new build target screenshot and when you build it about 500 screenshots get created in the work directory so yeah this is this is my next slide where um, if you run make screenshots you get uh, this in this work the work directory screenshots folder you get the screenshots of all all dialogues of, of all UI files we excluded those that are not based on UI and currently last time I counted it was like 169 dialogues all together and the, st the structure of this screenshot where, where the screenshots are collected copies closely the structure how, how the UI files are stored uh, one addition uh, for the different systems there were quite uh, some small problems we had to exclude five or six dialogues which currently do not open even with the fallback but uh, compared to the about 500 screenshots which get created uh, it's not so bad yes yeah, so now we have collected insane amount of screenshots and what yeah. are we going to do with them we put them into the help text so as a first step we first logical step is to copy the screenshots where they would be actually expected I tweaked some Perl scripts that are it's some it's, it's a very complex process of packaging images in the in the in LibreOffice because there's some Perl scripts somehow running indexing some directories producing some one one file per line uh, special format files that are processed by yet another Perl script and only those are then somehow zipped together to to create some some zip folders uh, zip archives with all the images icons whatever else in LibreOffice so I extended those those insane scripts to actually process the content that is in in help content folder so nowadays if someone wants to write a help text and is looking for the for the images for the help images they will find them in the help content folder and they, they don't need two repositories one is one is enough uh, so the images are packaged and now we have to embed them into actual help files uh, I can only express my, my endless frustration using the help authoring extension which I, <laughs> which I used for, for embedding those images but at the end I somehow managed. The good thing is that uh, the way the images are embedded in, the, in HTML or in those help files it's this special uh, LibreOffice image URL so as long as we create some matching directory structure for different languages we get some localization for free so we don't have to extend the, the help like the, the file format the markup we used in the help files and we get the localized images for free and the next step is to actually if, if you if you recall the, the slide I used to highlight and annotate specific controls or specific parts of the dialogues and uh, show them like an, an interconnected with this with the with the actual help text and I'm going to hopefully going to show some demo of that and I will sincerely hope it won't crash so it's a uh, work in progress it's in a feature child workspace uh, already checked in but uh, not yet Where's completely finished how can I it's oh yeah, yeah it's coming. Okay. but th the idea was to uh, be able to uh, make a direct screenshot of every dialogue so when you open any dialogue and have the experimental feature set my mouse is running away. Oh, no. Yeah. So, 
So when, when you open any dialog and... So uh, I, I click here somewhere close to the uh, help button. I get a funny context menu like this. And here I can choose that I want to create a screenshot. And, well, this is a bug. It somehow comes back in the background. But here I can actually click and choose to highlight specific controls. And in the, in the text area underneath this unfinished yet, there will uh, appear some text, some, some chunk, some snippet of the, of the HTML or XML, which I can simply copy and paste and then embed it into the help file. So this works currently with every dialog which has OK and cancel buttons uh, below. And uh, to do it in the context menu was just the idea to not have to waste space with another button or something, so it will work everywhere. And uh, I have just experimentally added the other buttons which can actually be triggered from the context menu. It works. Uh, and as I said, this, there's still some small bits and pieces to be finished. So what do we still have to do is somehow improve the, the markup and the, the, the process of annotation, those widgets, and how to best interconnect that with the existing help. And possibly that was an idea both for design team and Olivier to uh, include that in help authoring extension. So if, if you're editing the, the, the help file in the help authoring extension, you can, I don't know, click some button on go somewhere and say, I want to embed this screenshot now. And that would em embed like the existing screenshot. Yes, and also the last step, the last mile is to, well, currently we're generating the files only for, well, on all platforms, but, but they're stored like all, it's, it's everything in one folder. So we have to somehow improve the structure to have different folders for different platforms and also perhaps for different icon sets or widget toolkits or, or whatever, whatever else. And to conclude my talk, I would like to thank the Document Foundation and all the donors that donate money to LibreOffice that they actually founded um, our work on this. And I would thank you for your attention and if there are any questions, there might be also answers. Oh, just one note, uh, it works recursively. You can make a screenshot of the screenshot annotation dialogue. <laughs> <laughs>